In this video I'm going to give you a very quick overview of variable layer height or adaptive layers on your bamboo P1P or P1S. This is Mad Mark Malloy. Keep watching. <laughs> Now if you've got a 0.4 nozzle and a 0.2 layer height consistently throughout your print what you might find is that on a curved surface as we can see here when you get to the top because the angle is a lot shallower at the top of the curve than on the sides you might get very distinctive steps showing on your print as we can see in this video here. So to overcome this we can use something called variable layer height or adaptive layers. And to do that on Bamboo Studio what you need to do is you need to be under the prepare menu at the, uh, at the top here. Click on your part and then as you go along the top toolbar you'll come to variable layer height. Click on that and then we see it changes colour. Now we have three colours here. We have like a, I was going to say a terracotta, but we'll call it orange. An orange colour towards the bottom, a grey colour, and then greenish colours. Now, these signify, these colours signify the thickness of the layer in those particular positions. So, imagine before we did this, everything was grey which meant that everything is a 0.2 layer height. If I press adaptive, we can see here that it changes. We have the orangey colour, we have the green colour, and we have the grey colour. So with the green colour, that signifies that the layer height in this area is shorter than 0.2, and the deeper the green, the thinner the layer is. So I think on a 0.4 nozzle the thinnest you can get down to is 0 0.08. So when it's really dark green it'll be 0 0.08. And then on the orangey bit that we see here that is where we have a, a wide um, layer height. So you could imagine on this particular part here where we've got the steep angle at the side it doesn't matter if we have a thick layer height uh, because the angle is so steep however at the top where we have a shallow layer height it does it does matter because we get the stepping that I showed you in the photograph before so this is a very simplistic view of that so I've just opened it up come into here pressed adaptive and this has popped up. Now next to adaptive you'll see we've got quality and speed so what I can do is if I move this down and let's say I move it down to 0.1 not 0.1 and I press adaptive now we'll see we have more green and less orange and what this signifies is that we're getting a finer print where producing a greater ratio of thinner layers to thicker layers. So when we looked at that photograph that we saw before, in fact I'll pop it up again here, we can see that we have distinctive steps on quite a lot of the top portion of the part. So what we can see here is more suitable for getting a good surface on the part that we can see here. Now what is handy is if you've done a print and you've got a print that you can look at it and you see where the detail isn't very good you can play about with these values. So I could do what, 0.3 adaptive and we can see exactly how this changes or I can come up to 0.7 adaptive and we can see how that changes as well and we can compare that with where the steps are on the sample component that we've got. 
What I do find though is that after you've done this a few times you get a good appreciation as to where you want um, the good quality layers. So like I say on this particular one when I had it down at point one, pressed adaptive, I kind of know that on a, a curve like this, a full dome, this level of um, fine lines is actually better. Right, so I've got this, I can slice this and I can print it. And this is the result I got. So we can compare this to the original image that I showed you and we can see that there is a, a massive difference here. Um, it's a lot better. Now another advantage of doing this adaptive layer is that it didn't actually take that much longer to print with this extra detail here. And the reason it didn't take that much longer to print is because we've got thicker layers in this area. So you can imagine if I'm putting a 0.24, in fact I'm not quite sure what uh, what that layer is, 0.28 layer down in this area here, then that's going to take a lot less time to print than it ordinarily would if it was 0.2. However, similarly when you get to the top here and you've got 0.08 of a layer, it's going to take you longer to do it. So this is a very basic demonstration of adaptive layers. Right, so we've looked at the automated generation of adaptive layers. What we can do is we can manually tweak this as well. So if you come to the, the menu that you can see here and you click on the, the green keyboard or hover over the green keyboard, you can see that some commands are shown and they say add detail, increase, decrease the edit area, um, remove detail, reset to base and smoothing. Now I'm not going to go into smoothing in this video so I'll just concentrate on the four commands at the top here. So on the side here you can see that I have a scale and this shows the layer height so you can see there the orange layers are thicker the green layers are thinner and where we need the most detail at the top it's the thinnest level and you can see as I hover my cursor over here it actually tells you what the layer height is at each of these layers so you see a maximum layer height of 0.28 and a minimum layer height of 0.08 so we can come onto this and we can manually go in and fine tune things so if I've done this and I think well Ideally, I'd like that 0 0.08 to come down a little bit further. I can actually modify what I have at the side here. And what I can do is when I'm on the side, you'll see a, there's a yellow shadow that appears on the sidebar. And this um, ties in with a yellow ring that goes around the part. Or a yellow line that runs down the part. Now this shows me where on the component I am going to be adjusting the layer height. And again if you look at that yellow bar, if I now go to my mouse button, as it says here, mouse wheel, increase, decrease the edit area, if I just hover over that bar and I move the mouse in one direction, you can see the area that I'm going to adjust is bigger. And if I bring it down, you can see the area that I'm going to adjust is shorter. So I'm keeping this on a short setting. And what I'm going to say to myself here is I want to keep that point eight down to about that position there. So I come onto the bar, I press my left mouse button. If you remember, left mouse button is to add detail. So that makes the layer lower, layer short, ha lower. Yes, lower was right. So I do that and then I drag down here and you can see that we're getting a darker green further down the component and then I can just let go of that. For instance on this as well we have a little radius at the bottom here so what I could do is I could come down find where that radius is 
and just make that a bit finer as well. So I've concentrated on the areas where detail is more of an issue and increased the resolution there. Another thing we can do, and for this, I'm going to reset. I have another plate at the side here. Now we had an example of this plate being printed. Let me just move that up and I can show the, the picture below. So here we have another little snapshot of a bit of terrain that um, somebody used and had a bit of an issue with. And if we look at the photograph, we can see that we had the, the stepping on the top of the curved surfaces here. So what I want to do on this is I want to go on and do a similar sort of thing and put detail in the key areas, which is basically on the top here. Now, I could do what I did before. I could go in and press adaptive and we'll see that everything turns green. So that print is going to take an absolute age. I can move this up to say 0.5, press adaptive, and we see we've still got a lot of green on there. But I know from the, the model that I did before, the, the resolution at 0.2 was absolutely fine in this area here. So I'm going to, again, knock it up a bit but regardless of what I'm doing here I seem to have a lot of green which means a lot of small layer heights so I'm going to say right I'm getting getting away from the adaptive stuff what I'm going to do here is I am just going to go in find the top of the part and then drag it down and you can see on this side you get different levels so if I just do that you can see I've got a, a gradient as it falls down from a a more from a, a, a thinner layer to a, a thicker or normal layer now one of the other things that we had on here was the remove detail so if I, I click the other mouse button here you can see I've got a bit of a peak that I don't want and click on that and get a, a gradual curve as it comes off the top. So I have a nice amount of detail along the top. I have my 0 0.8 and then I just gradually fade it back down to the standard 0.2 um, millimeter layer. And I find that doing this gives me a quicker print than doing the adaptive layer and ensure then doing the adaptive layer on a on a component like this the problem with a component like this is if you look we have areas of fairly high detail from around here around there around here up the side so when it's calculating the adaptive layer it looks at that and says well that's a really detailed bit i'm gonna put um small layer heights into there but in actual fact when you print it off you'll find that these areas don't really matter, aren't really noticeable. The areas that are noticeable are the ones on the top, as we see here. So, I've shown you that. I've put the detail in there. If you wanted to, you could put detail at the bottom here, although I do find that the detail on the underside it's not so in your face so you can normally get away without putting the detail there but imagine I had put a whole load of detail in that area and I wanted to get rid of it I'm thinking oh god what did I do that for I want to just get back to my 0 0.2 layer if I hold down my shift button and scan along here you'll see everything goes down to what is the nominal value. And if I totally want to do thing manu things manually and I thought at the bottom here I wanted less resolution and thicker layers again as I've said before I could click the other mouse button and we'd see that that and drag that and that would take the resolution out at the bottom. 
Now coming back to the size of the yellow portion, if you'll see if I do that like that, so I've got a large yellow portion and my mouse point is in the middle of it, if I click detail on that you'll see what happens is it raises in that area and then gradually fades out to the extremes of where the uh, the yellow band is. So again that's just another little thing that you, you might want to you might want to play with. So I'll shift that left mouse button, always left mouse button, it's not shift and right mouse button. Regardless of where it's at, if you do shift and left mouse button, it'll take it down to what your nominal um, line height uh, li line height is. Yep. So my brain didn't work there. I think that's what happens. Get in your 50s and uh, things don't quite work properly. So to give you an idea of how this came out, I'll just zoom out on that. So, so this, this is, is the photo, photo of, of the original um, model, model that my friend, friend made. made. And, and this, this is, is the photo of the model that, that I have done, done on the settings, settings that, that we can see here. here. So, so we can see, see again a vast, vast improvement. improvement. I, hope I hope you, you enjoyed, enjoyed. That, that little, little uh, introduction, introduction to uh, variable, variable layer height, height or adaptive, adaptive layers. If, if you did, did please, please subscribe. Click, click the little, little subscribe button, button at the bottom, bottom there. there. It'll, It'll certainly make, make life a lot easier for me. me. Um, and then allow, allow me to do, do more, more of these videos. videos. So, so I, hope I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed watching. watching. This, this is, is Mad Mark Loy signing, signing out. out. Goodbye. Bye.